Welcome back to the UEG Week Congress TV. Let me please introduce you our um, new guest. Um, we have Professor Ronnie Fass. He's a professor of medicine at the Case uh, Western Reserve University in Ohio from the USA. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, Professor Fass, since the 90s, we have actually this wonderful medicine, which is the PPI, who helped millions of patients around the world. Um, but today, we noticed that more and more patients are uh, showing adverse effects coming from the PPI treatment. So I think this brought a lot of researchers to um, maybe search for an alternative. And I think you are one of those people. So could you please tell me more about your project? So the project uh, truly focused on patients who failed uh, PPI treatment. But what's unique about the project is that it's focused on those with documented gastroesophageal reflux disease. Why I'm saying that? Because in the past, many of the studies were focused exclusively on patients with heartburn that failed PPI treatment without truly investigating those patients, ensuring that they have gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we are back here in this project where we focus on patients with clearly evidence of gastroesophageal reflux disease. They either have documented erosive esophagitis on upper endoscopy, or they have an evidence of abnormal esophageal acid exposure. And in these patients, when they fail PPI treatment, at least standard dose once a day, then the next question we have in our practice is what do you do next? What is the option? Commonly what we do today is we double the dose. What we do is we take the same PPI that has failed, and now we are doubling it in the hope that that will take care of patient symptoms. Even if it doesn't have any scientific evidence? Even if, it, even if the scientific evidence is limited. I wouldn't yeah. say that there is no scientific evidence, but I'd say it's limited about that value. Okay. We do have some evidence that double dose PPI work better than once a day in patients who fail PPI once a day, but we don't have an extensive evidence to support that. But here, in this case, uh, we're looking at those patients with documented GERD who fail PPI once a day, and, and the question is, what do you do next? Hmm. Okay, so did you already start with um, clinical trials? Yeah, so what we are uh, presenting here during this UGW is the phase 2B uh, trial of, uh, of this project. And in this project, what we did is we looked at this new medication it has the capability of binding to bile acid that reflux back into the stomach. Now why we're using that medication? The reason for that is that we have data in the literature suggesting that bile acid reflux does play a role in failure of patient with gastroesophageal reflux disease. So as a result, this is in fact the first drug in that class so it's a novel therapeutic approach in a challenging situation, patient who failed PPI once a day, where it's not clear what should be the next step, and using a bile acid reflux binder. Now the study was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Okay. It was also uh, a, a, a dose-seeking study because three different doses of the drug were used. Uh, and uh, patients, about 65 of them in each arm, received the PPI, the, the PPI, the standard dose of PPI that the patient was taking on a regular basis. We did not change that. And then they got either a placebo or one of the doses of the drug. And the study clearly found, looking at two important dimensions of symptoms, which is frequency and severity, and then looking at six type of GERD-related symptoms, the dose that received the highest dose of the drug, the 1500 milligram, plus the PPI, the standard dose that they're usually on, uh, demonstrated significant improvement in all these symptoms and in these two important domains, suggesting that this drug has an important effect on these patients and significantly improved their symptoms. And as a result, this study helped us to determine that now we can move to the phase three trial and in the hope of getting this drug eventually into the market. 
In this study, how long were the patients taking the uh, new drug? So they were taking the medication for eight weeks. Okay. And uh, during that period of time, they were filling uh, a, a validated questionnaire, which helped us to determine the effect of the drug on the symptoms. Okay. So, yeah, hopefully we will see that the drug would be uh, one day on the market. Um, do you see a use of this drug in the guidelines, maybe, in the future? So, obviously, we have to go through the phase three trial. And if the phase three trial is as positive as the phase two B, then I see this drug coming into the market and as a result, definitely incorporated uh, into our guidelines. Now that goes back to the first comment that you made when we started the conversation. And this comment was that we're looking now at the issue of adverse events of PPIs. And one of the concerns is that when you give patient twice a day PPI, when they fail PPI once a day, you increase their risk of developing adverse event. Now here come these drugs that can prevent the need to double the PPI dose. The patient will still need to be on PPI once a day. But at least we will reduce potentially the number of patients that will require twice a day PPI. And as a result, we can reduce uh, the prevalence of PPI's adverse events. Okay, Dr. Faas, a last question. What are your expectations from the UEG week? Oh, I have tremendous expectations. First of all, it's a fantastic meeting in a beautiful location. But more than that, there is great science here that is presented it's cutting edge science and for me it's one of the reasons I'm here is to listen to this science. Uh, in addition, it's an opportunity to debate topics, to discuss important challenging cases and also networking. Okay, Dr. Fast, thank you very much. Thank you.